Hello, America. One of the most important tasks for Muslim apologists here in the West is the desexualization of Islam. Islam allows sex with prepubescent girls, sex with up to four wives, sex with slave girls, sex with war captives. There was even a time when Islam allowed prostitution. It was called mutta. Sunnis believe that Muhammad eventually condemned the practice. Shias still believe mutta is okay. Muhammad had sex with at least nine wives on the same day. Yes, Muhammad was allowed to break the four-wife rule. After all, he was the one who was receiving the revelations. Nothing suspicious there. Muhammad had sex with his wife Aisha when she was nine years old. He had sex with his female captives and his slave girls. And Muhammad, according to Surah 3321 of the Quran, is the example that all Muslims are supposed to imitate. Islam proclaims that Muslim men who enter paradise will be given at least 72 virgins. We hear a lot about the number 72, but according to uh, the Hadith, 72 virgins is the minimum. A really good Muslim will receive far more women in paradise. According to Ibn Kathir, the greatest Islamic commentator of all time, Muslims in paradise will be able to have sex with 100 virgins a day. And in case Muslims are worried that they won't have the strength for that much sex, Muhammad promised that Allah will give them miraculous sexual abilities, including eternal erections. Now in the West, Muslims want to portray Islam as the pure, holy, uncorrupted worship of Allah. Islam is about modesty and self-control and decency. But when we open the Muslim sources and find a far greater emphasis on sex than we find in America or in any of the cultures Muslims routinely condemn, we start getting suspicious, we start asking questions. And when people start questioning and criticizing Islam, what do you do? You reinterpret your scriptures to make your religion more palatable to your audience. And this is the standard practice for many Muslims in the West. What's disturbing is that some of the top American television networks are now totally on board with the project. They're actually helping Muslims water down Muhammad's teachings in order to make Islam more attractive to Westerners. ABC News, you'll remember, went so far as to promote the radical group Revolution Muslim as America's first line of defense against radicalism. ABC has dedicated some of their best reporters to the task of painting a rosy picture of Islam. So, ABC, let's focus on just one of the questions you answered for us in your 2020 special. What about all those virgins in paradise? That's a concern to some of us in the West. Do you think you could get someone to reinterpret Muhammad's teachings for us? Is there anything in the Quran that promises 72 virgins for a, for a holy martyr? I don't see any evidence in the Quran for the pledge of 72 virgins. This notion of 72 virgins actually comes from a mistranslation, uh, with the real translation being 72 raisins. And other more modern books distort the scripture even more. 72 raisins? 72 raisins. 72 raisins? 72 raisins. Raisins? 72 raisins. These things? 72 raisins. Why not just go to the grocery store? 72 raisins. You see, all those terrorists and suicide bombers shouldn't have listened to their shakes they should have gone to ABC News for the correct interpretation of the Quran. Then they would have realized that Islam only promises raisins, not virgins, in paradise. And let's face it, who's going to blow himself up for a box of raisins? Ursad Maji claims that the term horis should be translated as raisins. Now, just to make this easy for Ms. Manji, I'm going to throw out all of the hadith, all of the Sarah literature, all of the commentaries, and all of their clear descriptions of sex with Horis. That's where we get the real details about Muhammad's paradise. But let's just go with the Quran on this one. What does the Quran say about the Horis Muslims will receive in paradise? Surah 44, 51 through 54. As for the righteous, they shall be lodged in peace together amid gardens and fountains, arrayed in rich silks and fine brocade, even thus, and we shall wed them to dark-eyed houris. So Muslims are going to marry these houris. Surah 52, 20. 
They will recline with ease on thrones arranged in ranks, and we shall marry them to Horis, female fair ones, with wide lovely eyes. Again, Muslims are going to marry their Horis. Surah 55, 54 through 56, they shall recline on couches lined with thick brocade, and within reach will hang the fruits of both gardens. Which of your Lord's blessings would you deny? Therein are bashful virgins whom neither man nor genie will have touched before. Bashful virgins never touched by man or by genies. Surah 55, 70 through 74. In each of the gardens there shall be virgins, chaste and fair. Which of your Lord's blessings would you deny? Dark-eyed virgins, sheltered in their tents. Which of your Lord's blessings would you deny? Whom neither man nor genie will have touched before. These virgins are going to be chaste. Surah 56, 22 through 24. And there will be companions with beautiful, big, and lustrous eyes, like unto pearls well guarded, a reward for the deeds of their past life. These Horis will have beautiful, lustrous eyes. Surah 56, 35 through 38. Verily we have created them maidens of special creation, and made them virgins, loving their husbands only, equal in age for those on the right hand. The Horis will be very loving. Surah 78, 31 through 34. Surely, for the God-fearing, awaits a place of security, gardens and vineyards and maidens with swelling breasts, like of age and a cup overflowing. The Horis will have swelling breasts. Let's put all of this together. According to ABC News, Muslims in paradise will get married to beautiful-eyed, large-breasted, chaste, loving raisins that have never been touched by man or jinn. That's your story, ABC? If I were a Muslim, I think I would actually be upset at this distortion. Go ahead and try to insert the word raisins into some of the verses we looked at. And we shall marry them to raisins with wide lovely eyes. Surely, for the God-fearing, awaits a place of security, gardens and vineyards and reasons with swelling breasts. Is ABC News accusing Muslims of being attracted to raisins? Oh, the Islamophobia being attracted to raisins would be much, much weirder than being attracted to virgins. It's grapeophilia. Do you like dried fruit? Convert to Islam. You'll get to marry some large-breasted raisins. ABC did this over and over again in their special about Islam. They would raise a question, an important question, like why is there such an emphasis in Islam on deflowering virgins in paradise? And then they give an answer that can't possibly be correct. All you have to do is open up the Quran and you'll see that the Quran can't possibly be referring to raisins. And then after misleading millions of Americans, ABC would move on to the next topic. When did it become the job of American television networks to deceive Americans, to water down the facts, and to help propagate Islam? I don't know. But the sooner people realize what's going on, the sooner we can start demanding accurate answers to our questions. Stay tuned, America. We've got a lot more to cover.